tossing up my screen here. Um, so as we know, you know, REST stands for representational state transfer. As Jesse kind of alluded there, the, the main functions of REST are based on CRUD. So that's creating, reading, updating, and deleting you know, of operation, uh, operations you know, concerning different resource paths. In short, REST services provide you know, a structured and scalable way for applications to communicate over the uh, internet. They're ultimately emphasizing a stateless resource-oriented approach using HTTP. So with these principles, you know, designers, developers, they can create APIs that are easy to understand, maintain, and integrate very easily with other platforms. For today's session on REST services, we're gonna be focusing in on the Spotify API. Now this is gonna be returning simplified versions of objects or object references uh, to complete our retrieval processes. These APIs, and we'll actually go ahead and expand out the larger Spotify API so we can view the specification itself. Spotify has many different endpoints. These are ultimately under fetching endpoints. So it's gonna require us to make many different round trips to get the data that we truly need. It's also gonna be sending back a lot of unnecessary data. So how do we ultimately limit that data and target only the elements that we would like for our application? I've created a quick test case here in Ready API. And kind of looking at the structure of this test case, there are about six different API calls being made. So we are continuously reaching out to Spotify to fetch more granular information uh, that our app uh, application actually requires. So jumping into our first request here, we're gonna be fetching the currently playing track on my Spotify account. We can see here on the right side that we've been able to successfully make a request and receive back a response. But as we can see, it is quite a lengthy response and we do not need nearly half of the data that has been returned. So REST offers some options to kind of limit the data being returned to us. These are what we call parameters. Uh, in particular, I'm thinking of the query parameters. So with just an update to this field, we will be able to make a secondary request and avoid this available markets field. And as you can see, these are different country codes. There's about 180 of them and they appear twice within our response data. So we can go ahead and limit that just by applying a query parameter. There's also, also an additional types field but we'll go ahead and just leave that blank for now. As we look through our data, you know, let's say we wanted to get more information on the artist who actually sings uh, this particular song. It has some good data, but we want more granular and more specific information on this artist ACDC. So we're gonna jump down to our secondary request. In addition to getting more artist information, we're also gonna be fetching additional track information, album information, accessing the, the artist's top three tracks. And then this last one, I'll even just go ahead and delete it. It is an audio analysis request, uh, but we'll leave that out for this quick review. So let's go ahead into our second request where we're gonna be fetching additional track information. Within Ready API, one of the most widely used features is what we call property expansion. And this allows us to source data from previous API calls. It also allows us to source data from legitimate data repositories like Excel, Java databases, as well as Ready API's data generator. So for this secondary request for track information to be successful, we need an ID value. That ID value is based on the response data from our initial request. So we're gonna go ahead and right click, use get data here, target our current track and its response. This gives us a nice clean JSON node breakdown so we can now scroll through and target the ID field for the song Thunderstruck. With that populated in, we can now send that request out and get another bit of information. So this is more robust information on the track itself. Now to our third request, same concept applies here. 
we are looking for additional information on the artist. So we can go ahead and right click here, use of get data. We can target our currently track request and we can also use the response data from the get track requests. So we'll go ahead and get that response. And we're not looking for a track ID, we need the actual artist's ID. So with that populated, we can now make a second, uh, secondary or tertiary follow-up call, get back data just pertaining to ACDC, you know, such as what genres these artists sing, any images that we may need for that artist, their popularity. So we continue this over and over again. And so we've ultimately obtained all of the information that we need. And we'll go ahead and use the album. We're now targeting our artist, pardon me, our album ID. So we're now able to make, uh, apparently they've changed that. So let's go ahead and use the current track response and target this album here. I guess they don't have that ID anymore. They must have changed it, which is interesting. But nevertheless, we would continue the cycle until we have made successful requests for all of the data that we need for our application uh, to process through. Oh, that's fine. That would be our album request. And this is our artist top three tracks. So we're able to continue this cycle through, fetch all of the data that we need, but it would be much more efficient if we are able to get every piece of data that we need with just a single request. So in my mind, I think of an application where we're rendering the first initial page, you know, that is some server-side processing taking place. And then as users are navigating through the application, we're rendering additional pages within the site. Every time we access a page and maybe even update some of the data, it needs to go fetch from the Spotify API information that pertains to that page. Whereas if we knew upfront what was needed, we can just make a single request to the API and get all aspects, <clears throat> all aspects of the page needing to be rendered. So there we go. About five different requests, all passing data from one to, to another, just to obtain a set of data. So we're gonna look at GraphQL next and see how this protocol will benefit us and make things a little bit more simple compared to REST.